So, first thing we're going to do is take the top console loose. And so basically, we need to take these two screws off and these two screws. And then we're going to take the top console loose. We don't necessarily have to take it off. We're just going to take it loose for now. Okay, so once you've taken the two mounting tabs off the back, basically what you'll do is you'll pull the whole console forward a little bit. Just pull it forward like a quarter of an inch. And then you'll be able to lift it up. Theoretically. You can see how that is. There's a little tang in there that catches it. So you have to push it so that that tang comes loose. So this one's got to come back just a little bit in order to come up. And once we got up here, then we could take a look at the lid switch. So this lid switch here definitely is going to need some work. Okay, so this uh, this uh, this lid switch actually started rusting. It was rusting, and the, the rust was actually uh, part of the reason why it was stuck. And so uh, apparently, this piece of metal here on this tang is needed to have the switch work properly. It's an electromagnetic switch, I believe, that senses this, which may be a magnet, it senses it and tells the machine to go on. So, then what I've seen is some people, when they have a problem with this lid, this lid uh, lock mechanism, basically you can take this lid lock mechanism off. There's two screws that hold it. And I've seen some people take this lid lock off here and then permanently place it down in here. And so that would solve that uh, locking problem. However, you would bypass a certain safety mechanism. It's for like to have the lid locked in case there's a small child that happens to come by here and open it up. He, he wouldn't be able to open it up. Uh, normally and so anyway if we take a look at the switch from the bottom this is basically what it looks like and so and you can see that looks like it's locked right now so in order to unlock it, you need to push this little tang thing back here. It's got to go back uh, far enough so that the, the door tang can go past there. Because that's the thing that catches it. It's just this little thing that comes down here. And so I'm not sure exactly why, you know, what how, or how to troubleshoot these. Um, at this point, there is theoretically a schematic diagram. Uh, and here's your model number, by the way. Um, this is model 2, uh, 110-213-0212. But I'm not exactly sure how to troubleshoot this with a meter. I've had these things apart to look to see if there's any fried parts in these, but I haven't uh, had much luck. Uh, so simply uh, either get another machine or uh, try and replace this switch. <clears throat> now, that switch may not be the problem. The switch is only part of the circuitry. Um, and it could be the computer, the computer behind this. So, to take the top console off, you can either take it off from the back and look and see if the troubleshooting manual is inside or you can take it off from the front. 
This one I, I took off from the front. And you can see what holds this thing in here. Basically there's this clip right here. And you need to stick a flathead screwdriver or a paint scraper and push these, push this in so that it, it's able to come through this hole here and pull up. So basically it's kind of a D-shaped uh, kind of clip. You have to push from the front to shrink it so it'll come back through this hole here. So anyway, this one's been off. This one here, uh, it had a sort of an intermittent problem that I wasn't sure what the problem was, so I just let it sit here in the backyard for a while. And uh, so there's your computer right there. That's what your computer looks like. Here's the Here's the water level tube. I, I disconnected the water level tube, uh, probably because I was testing something. And uh, so here's where this thing sits right now. So if you're having a problem with the, uh, the transmission itself and not necessarily the lid lock switch, uh, look up this model in tra uh, transmission shifter. There's a small part, it's the size of, oh, uh, it's sort of like well, maybe that size, except it's sort of a more of a roundy kind of thing. And uh, look that up, transmission shifter, and you can probably uh, buy one very reasonable on the internet. And you might just consider, you know, buying one and then putting it on. It goes on the bottom of the transmission. And so, I don't know if I can show this to you or not, but basically it goes on the bottom of the transmission. Okay, here, I'll show you the bottom of the transmission. The, so this is basically, this, this transmission has been removed from the machine as you can see. And before we get off into the shifter, I'm going to talk a little bit about, again, the lid lock switch and uh, some other problem that may occur uh, with this particular model. Some may have a different face, but may have the same transmission. So basically, <clears throat> on this one here, what would happen was, after it would do the cycle, the lid would stay locked for about at least maybe a minute or up to three minutes. It would stay locked. I couldn't, I couldn't open the door. And so basically, that was the problem with this. So, and I, I never figured out what the problem was. So it's just been sitting here ever since. Now, some other units that I found may just need the shifter. This is the shifter mechanism right here. And so basically there are, I believe, only two Phillips screws that hold this unit in place. One right here and then one right here. They're kind of green color. And so, yeah, it's called a synchronous motor. That's what they call it. And, uh, and of course your wiring harness will be connected in here. So that's your shifter. And that will cause certain problems with the transmission. Not necessarily a lid lock switch or an, an error up here. Although if you do have the troubleshooting manual, if your lights are working properly, it may indicate the shifter. So, and if you look at your motor, and it looks pretty good, there's no burnt windings or anything it's a pretty good chance there's no problem with the motor so the other problem that I found with these is basically this nut here will come loose so or something inside the transmission will create slop in the shaft and the slop in the shaft will uh, mess up your your pulley here so that's your tip for your high efficiency technology washer. 
And if you need any help, you can contact me at appliancesworks at yahoo.com, 707-445-1591. And uh, if you've benefited from this video, please send me a donation. It's Bill's Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. Thank you.